Okay, look at this. Is this amazing? This is Lady Shallot, y'all. Come on. Love, 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 love Lady Shallot. I can't even tell you. And then we put this along the edge. This is from Trimmings 1. It's the one with the pretty little flowers because, you know, flowers beget flowers. Ha! And we're going to put some um, gilding wax. I can't decide what color I want to do, so that's on hold. And then on the other side, because if you follow me on Wednesday Whimsy, you know I love two firsts. Two firsts. You get the two fur. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Yuta. How are you all doing? Thank you, Letty. Thank you, Rundy. So you get the two sides with one. And then I'll just, once everything's all set, said and done, I'm just going to take a, a drill and, and drill into the top. And actually, I think I had this as the top. Does it really matter? Because it's all awesome. But, um, and then we'll put like a ribbon so that you can hang it on the wall and you can flip it to whatever side you want. So I was thinking, Lady Shallot, we were signing up for what products we wanted to do. So I want to work with this side with you all today, if that's okay, if you don't mind. Hi, Heather, thank you so much. Yay. How, has anyone used Lady Shallot yet? Like, tell me how much you love it if you've used it, because I'm in shock with that one. I'm, I'm in, uh, who's, and then, and if you're not using Lady Shallot, um, have you used cherubs? And another thing I want to know, what is your favorite item of the retired, 19 retired products? Right? This is like, oh my gosh. I'm really, really, really shocked. Hi, Elsie. How are you today? All right. So I know it's not Elsie, but you know, my brain. Um, Elsie Lane. Um, oh, hi, Joan. Debbie. Oh, you guys are awesome. So we're going to work on this. All I've done is I've, I'm putting together a video because I know everyone asks. So hopefully I get figured out how to get the live videos onto YouTube, but we'll get it figured out. So all I've done is I have, this is a, um, like an off-white paint, uh, chalk style paint, all right? We put it on very thin. There's no need for sanding. It was almost like on, like water down, okay? If you notice, like, Look how nice these wood gallery blanks are put together. There's like no seam. I didn't, I literally was in the midnight hour putting this together last night. So there was no prep on this. This is awesome. This is quality work. So we did the black, okay, of course, over the mold as well. And so let me just show you the products in their full state, okay? This is Lady Shallot. Okay, look at this. It's two sheets of yumminess, okay? And then this is classic cherubs. And you know what's nice with this is wings and feathers because you get the little feather parts and you can and you can add them. I mean, you do get the little feathers here too, but you'll get longer feathers in wings and feathers. So it's a nice way to combine them. So we're gonna be using that, those two on this side. I'm also, I don't know if we'll get time. I wanna use you know, I was thinking we'll put the flower, we'll put the cherub in the mold, and then we'll put just a simple little L-O-V-E because it is, you know, that time of the year. And hence, a reason for a twofer. Okay, so, i got to keep myself on track here. Does anyone else, anyone having any questions? Make sure you shout out any questions. The, I know, the twofer. Love twofers. Japonica, I know. I know. We were talking about that. I think it was this week, right, Uta? Um, hanging from the top. I know. So what, what I find is when you do that, um, Trish, is make sure you have a long enough ribbon so that it can properly hang up against the wall. It can't be like a short jute. If you're going to do a shorter version, try to, um, let's see, how would we? No, you just, you got to have it long. You got to have it long enough. I was thinking you could try and drill to like one side or the other, but then one side will, will struggle to lay flat. But I find if you do the ribbon or your jute or whatever it is you're using, your trimming piece long enough, it, it allows it to lay flat. So just so you know that part. 
And, okay, um, we're going to use the Iron Orchid Design Black Ink. Okay. Um, oh, thank you, thank you, everybody. I'm just looking over the comments. Love the stamp. It was the first I ever got. Yes, Pat. Like, love, love, love this. So you're sad. Um, so what I like to do, and, I, and, and if someone's watching and knows who first came up with this idea on like you get the black uh, blank iod ink pads right and you get the ink and you just juice up the pad now i did this last night okay just just because i was doing the video right and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a popsicle stick and we're going to Make sure it all blends into the pad nicely. Okay. And you set that aside. You could take this pad, all right, and you could just tap your stamp. I don't like to do that, okay? Oh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, everybody. I did it again. So when you get the stamps, okay, when you open it up for the first time out of here, right, it's going to be in two parts. There's going to be like stages of this, okay? You're going to have your stamp, and then you're going to have this sheet that peels off the top. Okay? Take that sheet, keep it around, because you can use it to make a larger stamp, or you can use it for a palette down the road. There's so many uses for these. Um, you're going to take like a fine grit sandpaper, and you're going to sand the stamp one direction then the other direction you wipe it clean and that's the only time you do it okay you literally just you know with the sandpaper and of course whenever I'm looking for it I never have one handy um, and they're all over the place here so you just literally like scrape it with like a 220 grit or so I've done it with a 150 grit and then just again wipe it clean first time use only and then you just keep going the nice thing about these is they're 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 great to, for um, versatility. You know, you can on a lot of these you can just peel off your your stamps, whether it's flowers or words, right? Um, I was gonna say love, but um, let's put lose <laughs> just because I'm in a rush here, right? So let's say we wanted to make an arrangement. What, now, imagine this was flowers or this is something else. This is a bee and it's, um, and it's a dragonfly. Whatever it is, okay? You can, whatever, however you make your arrangement, that's where you use these four. And then a lot of the, the, the stock is carried, they're called the thin mounts that have a grid line on them, okay? These are the new ones. You can tell it has these arches. I don't know if you can see that. It also has the grid lines, okay? So it's nice for aligning, okay? This is just a quickie if you're new to stamps. So now you have one large stamp, and then you can ink that up as a stamp. All right, moving on. Okay. Making my piles. So we have our inked pad. We're going to get a brayer. Again, these Iron Orchid Design brayers are incredible. They're, they're high quality. They have that stamp rubber, so it's a nice heavy-duty rubber. And what I like, I really prefer is I let it ride the stamp. Now, you'll notice these stamps are cut apart. Something like this or the Pavo um, Barnwood Planks, I prefer, or Painterly, floral, painterly, painterly Roses, I prefer to cut them with the backing still on because it it's always going to be a freestyle, and so you're going to um, you're going to appreciate having that that backing on there. It gives it um, some stability. Other thing I want to mention is if you have the older version of the stamps and you haven't made a set of masks yet, take the sheet before you cut it up. Okay, the full 12 by 12 sheet, and stamp it onto something. Ink it all up and stamp both sheets onto something. Brown paper. I use transfer backing. <laughs> because I don't waste anything. Um, and I would actually, um, actually I didn't stamp it. I um, did outlines because I wasn't thinking. This is early on in the game. And um, 
so that you you can use it for a mask okay and you'll see what we're going to use that for in a minute all right the new the new ones i don't know if mine no doesn't have the mask new stamps unless it's like um Oh, well, Crackalura is gone now, and, and, and Distress is gone now. Um, you know, whatever. I can't say gone, but they're limited now at this point, right? Um, so they're not coming out with new ones. But um, those will not, would never have masks because you just can't make a mask for Crackle and Distress and whatnot. But anything that you could want to use a mask with, like the um, different lettering stamps, now come with the masks so you don't have to worry about making them. All right, so I'm just taking my brayer and I'm rolling it on the ink pad. We used to, If you don't have an ink pad, you can just take the ink, all right, get like a paper plate or whatever you have around that you, you don't mind, and you just squeeze a little bit on and you have like a nice little palette now to roll out your ink, okay? That's what we used to do to some genius figure this out. Okay. <laughs> so, of course, I'm going to start with this big, large, large, beautiful rose here. This is Amaze Balls. Love this. Oh, thank you, guys. All right. So, how do you store your cut stamps? Okay. You cut all your back with the backing attached and stick them together. So, yeah, they stick together in the bag. I'm, I'm not great with finding better options, so I literally just do this. I keep it, I don't really need to keep this with it because it actually may be more hampered, but it just keeps everything, I keep everything in a file. Well, it's really a cardboard box between you and me. Um, and it just sits in here. At least it's all together. That's my, my, my best version of, uh, Yes, right? We don't waste things, Stephanie. How are you today? Hi, hi. Is it bus? Is it Beatrice bus? Is it backwards? I always wondered that. How are you? Thank you for joining from Switzerland. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm shocked. Who, what was your most shocking product when you saw the list everybody okay see now I'm just making sure everything gets inked all right and I'm going to put it right down there Actually, since I did it on the left side before, let's change things up and put it on the right. Ah, okay. So now that it's down, I don't want it to move. You can hover and, and position all you want, but once it's on the surface, you don't want it to move. I am putting a little bit of pressure downward on this hand just to make sure this doesn't move. Okay. Hi, Donna. Where is the list? So the list is um, probably now, It's if you, if you get their emails, it'll be on their blog site. Um, I believe there might be a list on this page now. Pretty much all the retailers now, if you have a retailer that's online, um, go check out her page, because most likely, his or her page, because most likely they have the list out now. Um, but, the list is, if, okay, so since you didn't see the list, oh, okay, so anyone else who hasn't seen the list, it is um, Classic Bouquets Transfer, the Farm Fresh Signage Transfer, Prim and Trim, Redout, Japonica, Label Ephemera, Ladies in Waiting, <gasps> Astoria Foliage, uh, I can't even, okay, those are all the transfers alone. Hi, Mary, how are you? Now for the stamps, we have um, painterly roses, backplates, chippy paint, crackalure, distress, 
um, birds branches and blossoms, floral swags, pavo. Like if you saw my Wednesday whimsy a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago, we did a, like a holiday version with pavo. And then who was it that did the beautiful pavo down the side of the bureau? Come on, knob toppers. Of course, Lady of Shallot, and then class, and those were all the stamps. And then the only mold um, retiring is classic old cherubs. Okay. So hopefully I got everything down. If I haven't moved anything, I can kind of check out my progress. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Pretty good. Nice thing to have around when you're working with stamps and especially the ink is these wipies. That is a technical term. And as Mara would say, our sweet Mara would say, they're not just for butts. I love Mara. She has the best funky words and so a lot of it I think all of us gals that are doing videos today we do videos throughout the week on this page so make sure you check it out there's different days different times um, you can find a listing in the events I believe on, on the Iron Orchid design page I'm just giving this a wipe and then this can go in a sink later with some hot you know warm soapy water and maybe a soft scrubby brush or you know I even just use a, a sponge Okay, so we'll set this aside. Okay, what are we gonna put next? Well, we gotta do leaves, you know that. So maybe up here we'll put a leaf. And then we did this on the other side, but that's too predictable. So let's try something different. We have this one. And then we could put a leaf over here because a lot of this is going to get covered up, don't forget, okay, with the cherub. So let's do that. And then we need, maybe we'll just take this leaf and turn it to the other side. That's what we'll do. Just make life simple, right? So here's where the mask is going to come in handy because if I'm going to put all these things around it and behind it and about it, right, um, you're going to mess up this beautiful flower and you don't want to do that. Actually, we'll do that over here. Okay. So what I like to do and see, it would be nice if I stamp this, it's easier to line these things up because I would see the pattern, but right now all I have is a shape and you'd be surprised how hard that is to, to line up. Like it's super hard. I know, Kathy. I, 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 I might have teared up a little bit when I saw that Astoria foliage on the list. I might have teared up. Hi, Suzanne. How are you, friend? And Patricia, the Mitten sisters are in the house. How are things in Michigan? Hello, Missouri. Hi, Faye. Oh, my goodness. Quite a list. And I'm going, I know. Ephemera. Like, wait till you see what I, you know, the table we did. I'm going to, before we, we cut out, Remind me to go show you the table. I love, love, love the combination of Lady Shallot and Ephemera. Label Ephemera. Okay, you'll see. So we're not going to use a lot of this. So I'm not going to ink up the whole thing. Okay. It could be paint. Oh, by the way, if you're new to all this and you happen to just stumble upon and don't know what all the excitement is. and um, Let me tell you. You, these stamps and the molds are food safe. Like, coming from my background, I paint. I tell everybody that. I'm probably, some people are probably sick of hearing it. I paint, that's what I do. Okay? And I'm going to cut this little tip off. It bothers me. Okay. All right. So, let's put a little more here just in case. We're going to probably have to shove this in there a little bit. That's okay. Now I don't have to worry about it because I have the mask down over the big rows, okay? So there we go. I'm not moving. I have pressure on this hand always. And then if I move to... I have to cap pressure on this hand, okay? You don't wanna press really super hard, 
okay? That can distort your image. You see? Now we haven't made a mess of the big rows. So, get familiar with the, um, oh, what did I do? I just had it in line. How did I have, okay, there we go. See how it happens? Trouble, it's trouble, I tell you. And then we wipe it with the wipey, and we're gonna clean it in hot soapy water, or warm soapy water, let's be clear. Warm, hot can melt these, okay? Oh, speaking of which, which got me thinking of other options that you can use with um, the stamps and the molds. They're food safe. Blew my mind coming into all this. So, like, uh, Christmas, we were all doing the sugar cookies. You can stamp your royal icing with the stamps or your fondants. Um, it's just mind-boggling. Um, these are useful for adding embellishments to pottery. Anyone else do something different with the, um, with the products that, instead of the typical um, crafting or baking? Does anyone do anything with pottery, perhaps? Okay, we're going to do that. See, this is why we cut these up, because they're always going to be you built like a Build-A-Bear, you know? You're going to build it as it goes. And we still have to do... Our mold. I was gonna get all fancy and I'm thinking we're gonna try after I get the stamps down because I really wanted to be on top of things and do it before I got to this but let's start with some of the product that's retiring before we get sidetracked right? Alright so there again once it's down you don't want it to move you Valerie like you should talk oh my gosh the talent like the get my mitten sisters can tell you Joanne and Maine can tell you like these girls like I am in, 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 in awe of all the talent that everyone puts out there and Valerie at Bluebird Mercantile is amaze balls okay um and then, like, next we have Jenny from Worthy Treasures. She's going to be showing off some goodies. Like, and these girls, oh, see, now we have, I didn't press down. I didn't move my hand and make sure we press down over there. What do I do? Okay, I'm not going to fret over this because it is just paint. And if it really doesn't work out, I can just, after the video, go and, and, and redo this part. It's not going to be a, a huge deal. But I want to show you. I'm wiping off the excess ink. Okay, I want to keep it just to this area. Okay, let's make sure it's not any halos happening. Okay. And let's just add, actually we need to add some more to this area too. Oh my goodness. I got talking and I got distracted. Happens to the best of us. It does. See? So you can do a fix on portions and get away with it. Let's see how good I am. So if we line up other parts first. We should be able to get an image here pretty much in line. See, I'll take that. All right. Super cool. If it was just like a letter or something and you got like a little mush or something set down and you didn't want it to, you could take a wipey, you could add a little bit of the isopropyl rubbing alcohol that you have in your sinks at home, um, underneath your sinks I should say, and you can usually wipe a lot of the, the oops moments off and then maybe even just do like a wash of the um, background paint and, and, and you fix your oops moments. 
six. Now, see we had an oops moment on this side. Can you tell me where it happened? Like, can, can anyone tell me where the oops happened? I don't even know where I did it, but it's in there. <laughs> so, once you don't know that it was there, no one's going to be able to tell you where it happened because... All right, where did this go? Again. All right, here. No. Is it this way? There we go, maybe. There we go. Okay. Whew. And now we got to get the mask for the bud. Okay. Thank you, Grace. What are you sad for today? Are you are you going to be missing any of these retirements? Okay, here's the mask for this one. That one's pretty easy. Okay, so now we have the two masked and we're just going to put some of the leaves down and I'm going to try not to distract myself because we've proven how dangerous that can be. Mm. Hi Debbie. Hi Cheryl, how are you? We're playing in the sandbox a little bit sad though today. We're losing some friends. Some IOD product friends. So, bittersweet for sure. All right, so let's just do that. And don't forget, we're putting a mold over this, a big mold. I'm not going small here. We're going big. Okay. So what I wanted to do, we're going to do the mold in the clay just because. And then I want to do, um, I want to try and do the lettering, L-O-V-E, of course, with the, um, the, the fast cast resin that you can get at the stores. A lot of stockists carry them, so. Um, and make sure you use the link. In the description of this video, I'm sure everyone else is doing the videos, putting the link in. And so now our stamping is done. How pretty is that? I've even taken like um like a fine brush with a little bit of ink and, and filled in some spots if it depends on where where you're having issues, if you have issues, you can you can do things like that, okay? All right, so let's work with the molds now. Okay, we're gonna maybe set this over here so it stays in view so people can see if they're joining on later that we did something here. Um, I would love to get this done. What time do we have? 12.35. Um, let's see, let's just do it. Let's live dangerously, right? So we have the little cups. If you haven't used the resins, I was afraid to at first, and now you love using them. And it's not that you can't use um, the clay with the, with the letters. Let me show you. I actually did it opposite for this project. This was a, one of our Wednesday whimsies. Okay, this is the clay in the lettering mold, and this is the cherub done in the resin. Okay, and it's barn wood planks behind it. I'm just going to add some sort of trim around the edge, and that'll be a done deal. Okay, so hi, Teresa. How are you? Yes, two-sided. It's a twofer. That's what we love. I mean, I can't even look at the wood gallery blanks. I can't, I tried not to make more work for myself, but I can't seem to help myself. So what really helps the molds, and so this might take a little while to dry, 
is, um, and of course, I didn't think of getting the little cup to pour these into. Hold on one second. That's me making noises. Even if this doesn't set up, you'll see the finished product after, okay? But this is from Amazing. Um, these are everywhere, but you want to make sure it says cures in 10 minutes. It's not easy when you're looking in the aisle to, to spot that. And then you find yourself, you have one that is just a pour on, like I've done, <laughs> or you have one that doesn't dry in 10 minutes. So um, just be mindful. And then all you do is you do equal parts. Uh oh, sassy me. I didn't clean the edge before I sealed it. And so maybe we'll be doing it with, let's see. Be bang it, maybe. All great plans, right? So, who has anyone done anything with the cherubs? I love making ornaments out of them. You could just take like a Dremel. Hey Sabine, how are you sweetheart? You're awesome. You're, you do beautiful work over there doll. Um, has it been about using the resin? So yes, glad to help you out there John. I was and, 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 and once you do it, just do it, okay? And you'll, never, you'll, you'll, you'll wonder why you were afraid. Trust me. I should have gloves. Um, because this is a hot mess for a day, trying to get it off your hands. Um, but I'm not that put together. And I'm just going to come down to table. I'm not sure how much to make of this. So I can just make extra letters. Okay, we're going to wipe the edge. You want to have equal parts. And, you, and if you have too much of one, you have too much of the other, you're going to have problems, okay? And this doesn't want to screw back on. That's okay. That's okay. And it's always this part B that makes the mess for me. Like I really need to get, we're just gonna do this. It just doesn't ever pour as nicely, ever. Oh, that was actually pretty, pretty much on. I'm going to add a drop to the other one. Oh, wipe the edge. Okay. If you're doing the large cherub with the resin, just fill up both cups. Just saying. We did it with the live, right, ladies, who saw the live a couple weeks ago? <laughs> and I did a good amount. And we, we had to make more, and it still wasn't quite enough. So, so you pour part A. Part B, okay, this will want to set up in here pretty darn quick. Resin works, John, it works with heat, and it builds up heat when it has a lot of product. It builds its own heat. If you have thin spots in your molds, like the, the wings in the, um, in the cherub, that's the, the thin parts is where it doesn't like to dry well. So I'm just gonna, we might have to trim some of the, some of that off. Okay, but L. Anyone to take bets I do this wrong? Hard to miss it though, right? L-O-V-E. Okay, and then the E. And then, let's just pour some in other.
just using it up. You could always just make a bunch of these up, keep them aside, okay? There is some cornstarch because I didn't have time to clean this because, of course, those who know me, my brain works in mysterious ways and um, you would have thought, I would have thought about this last night, but the resin in the lettering was a thought this morning, so I didn't have time to, um, to clean these. Well, hopefully that little bit of cornstarch won't mess things up, okay? So that's that. You get the idea, right? But remember, if you got a pile of it in your cup, oh, this is going to be a mess here. This is over the top here. So I'm going to pull that off as well as the U. Apparently the U is over because you'll have a rounded back and you'll have a tough time gluing them. Okay, so let me just finish this out. Sorry, I made a lot. I didn't need to make that much. But I, I didn't want to be like our live the other night where I didn't have enough. Okay, so now we can, before this sets in here, I might be able to use this cup again. Just kind of wipe it out. See, it's warm in the cup. It will set in here really quick because it's got depth to it. These will take longer for it to dry because they're not so deep. If you have, I started to say, if you have like thinner parts and thicker parts, you might want to, um, to have things dry somewhat evenly. You might want to um, heat up your mold first. I've done it in the microwave before. And it gives that sort of a starter heat to help things along, okay? So let's carefully move this out of the way. Hopefully we can see that in drying. I can always, if we have some roundedness, we can take the Dremel or sandpaper and sand it down. But why make more work for us when all we have to do is, you know, wipe it off at this point, right? We can sand off the excess. Okay, so now let's get our mold. Okay, let's put this over here. Hopefully it doesn't fall into the resin, because you know that would happen to me. I got another pile going on the floor because I didn't bring garbage near me. So we're gonna use the air dry clay, and this is gonna use a lot. It's a big one. There's also the smaller ones, and then I guess you could use the smaller one, but I, I, I don't ever work that. I, I go for the large one all the time. The new alphabet mold called, this one is Harper. There's also Victoria. Um, let's see if I have her handy. Here is Victoria. There you go, Cheryl. They are amazing. Okay. And then, if you're new to the molds, oh, don't fall, okay. Gotta remember to clean all this after. Okay, we're almost there. We're gonna get um, a soft brush and cornstarch. You could use arrowroot powder, okay. Make sure you stay on um, at uh, one o'clock is gonna be Jenny of Worthy Treasures, okay. Then after Jenny is Mara, we love Mara, Retail Vintage Therapy, then Jane of Funcature Gifts, Peggy of Garden House Studio, then Michelle of Serendipity House, then at um, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific is Susan of Withered Barn. So we got goodies all day long. Okay. So we're gonna at least use all of this. I like to store, keep it in the bag, right? And I keep a damp towel, paper towel in, in another bag and keep it all stored together. And then I even like to put it in another bag. Some people use 
um, um, what do you call it, um, Tupperware, you know, the storage container, however you want to call it, and, um, and keep them air dry that way. But be mindful, this is an air dry clay, like any of the paper clays and all, but they dry with air. And it happens pretty quickly. You, you don't want to be, you know, working with your clay, set it down and go take a phone call and come back to it. It's going to start setting up and it'd be, you know, harder to work with. Okay. So that was a good hunk of clay. We're going to have to probably add more. Okay. And I'm just working it because I'm trying not to um, have too many seams. Although it's not a big deal, but, you know. It's better if you can just stretch it over to the areas rather than adding clumps and seaming them, okay? Although we did that with that mold um, on the trim here on the edge, and I was, you know, I did my job. When you glue the, um, the moldings down, you want to use, you know, kind of a quick set glue. We all really really love what did I do with it um, tight bond quick and thick it isn't as thick as the one I used to use which was at the craft store it's called um, Aileen's the quick um, the thick uh, fast grab something or other right um, that one is super thick but to, to tr tell you the truth this sets up so much quicker than that did even though that was thicker so what that helps you with is if you have a round surface, if you have, um, here's my other one, I have to open another clay. We're gonna do a little seam. Can you see this over here? It's starting to set up and we're getting where it's turning white, okay? And soon we can pop those out and, and of course, where are my scissors? We'll use, Straight edge. Always cut away from yourself, never to yourself. All right. Just open a new package, grab some out of here. The Iron Orchid Design Clay is amazing, okay? We use their ink in here, we're using their clay in the mold. We're just, and as far as paint, we're neutral. It works with like all the different paints, okay? So don't worry about what paint brands anyone's using um, you know just find a similar color it will work will they work with oil base I don't think so okay so we did the dusting of the cornstarch or it could be arrowroot powder it just helps release the mold okay In this case it's not going to be a big deal because there's no real fine parts but like this one here with the little curly cues Right, or this one here with the little scroll edge. That could be a little more of an issue. The tips I find of um, the hands and the arm, the arms and hands from the Sea Sisters, that you wanna make sure you have cornstarch on, right? Anyone used cherubs before? You just got classic cherubs? To, oh, I know. Lucky you. It was kismet. How are you, Joanne? This is such a pretty mold. I love using this for, you know, your garden pots, for ornaments, for the holidays. I mean, come on, for this time of year, at least here in America, we have Valentine's coming, right? If you're doing wedding gifts for someone or um, the... What do you call them? Boombardiers, as Italians say, the wedding favors, right? And I'm just pulling it all flat so she's nice and flat to glue onto the surface. Plus, it's pressing the clay down onto um, the part that matters, where all the, the imagery is, okay? I'm just trying to let gravity 
do its work because I don't want to stretch the clay out too much. All right, so look at this. We have a little tear because at the neck, the mold gets very thin there, but that's okay. I've done this all the time. Once it's glued down, it actually, even on this one here, we had it tearing, you can't tell. Okay, let's see, yeah, here. Once it's all put back, and this is the resin, okay? So you can't tell once we get this glued down and, and painted. So there's that. These are not set up enough yet, but we'll pull out the L-O-V-E, and we'll probably do those in pink. We'll keep this uh, um, white. We'll do it in that pearly, like that other angel. But I, I just had it. Here. This is like a pearly white. Um, and then we'll probably just use like a gray glaze. And we'll call, call it a day for her, right? But I wanted to show you Okay, I want to show you something really quick. We're going to unplug here. Let's see. And I want to show you something. I want to show you what you can do with Lady Charlotte and Ephemera. I mean, it's amaze balls, okay? Let's see, how do I switch this? Okay, here we go. How is that? I think those two are made for each other. Hi, Carla! Thank you for watching! Hi, Paula! So, right? I, Paula and I were talking about this table yesterday. This is, I just, I love, love this combination. Lady Shallot with Label Ephemera. Just portions. And I think it's, I think it's a great match. It's a cute little telephone table.